Hurricane risk in the Western Caribbean coming up this week on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 31st. Looks like the green light might be about to be given for potential tropical cyclone 15 in the Atlantic. And we also have 27W in the Western Pacific now, pretty much over Palau. And our team have gone with tropical storm status, just about scraping that status. And Nalgi still active in the South China Sea. In the Atlantic, potential tropical cyclone 15 is drifting westwards in the Caribbean Sea. Hasn't been designated a cyclone yet, but is probably going to in the coming hours or days and is likely to become a hurricane before reaching the southern Yucatan Peninsula. Also, that 10% chance still out there northeast of Bermuda. In the eastern Pacific, there's no areas of interest right now on day 170 of hurricane season and question marks as to whether we've seen the end of the season so far for the eastern pacific longer range models still throwing out something though in the western pacific nalgi moving northwestwards and really blowing up in the last few hours starting a second resurgence and might get back towards typhoon status soon and tropical storm 27w over palau and continuing westwards with quite a bit of convection over its center uh, this place to the southwest and a 60% area of interest that we're continuing to monitor in the southwest Indian Ocean, more towards the Australian region, it'll be hovering around that border. 60% chance and is likely to do a curve southeastwards and then back towards the west. Satellite imagery right now looks like this, and this is what the Atlantic is showing up. You can see both of those two systems, a convective burst to the southeast of that northern one, and that's really where the invest itself is actually. And obviously the potential tropical cyclone not looking great so far, but it is on its way. Look at the amount of dry air in the region as we go on to the eastern Pacific. The intertropical convergence zone is pretty much decimated there, although it's a little bit better than what it was looking like in our last update. A few thunderstorms blowing up, but no signs of tropical cyclones. Let's take a look at the close look now at the Atlantic Ocean, and this is the rapid scan on that potential tropical cyclone. Some convection bubbling up near where that potential center is, and that would put it pretty much directly in the middle of the Caribbean Sea in terms of latitude, and almost in longitude actually, uh, continuing to move westwards. We're not seeing very much rotation so far, maybe a little bit at the lower levels, and that's going to get better over time as it continues off past uh, Jamaica which is under a tropical storm watch now it will pass south of there and continue on towards the western Caribbean maybe the Cayman Islands and then the Yucatan Peninsula and it's likely to strike the southern part of Belize according to the latest forecast National Hurricane Center think it will become a hurricane there is that other system that you just got a glimpse of there and the full picture across the Atlantic right now and another area of interest well not an area of interest but some thunderstorms to the east of that potential tropical cyclone which look interesting uh, wonder whether that might uh, cause uh, issues for this growing storm or not but we'll see what happens Western Pacific looks like this and you can see how much Nalgi has improved in the last 24 hours moving northwestwards. By some estimates it's not far from typhoon intensity once again. And looking at the other system 27W, uh, there it is moving westwards and uh, fluctuating in terms of its convection. Question marks as to whether it's a tropical storm or not still at this point, it's right on the threshold. And this is what the Indian Ocean looks like. You can see that area of interest just about in the South Indian Ocean, but really not getting itself together at all yet. To be fair, we don't really expect it to get going until around day three or four. And in the Southern Hemisphere, once again, the Australian region, I should say, um, not too much going on here. Uh, just another front blowing through uh, airflow there, uh, continuing through uh, Southern Queensland and New South Wales. Uh, probably delivering more unwanted rain. Let's check those sea surface temperatures today then. The eastern Pacific still looking decent off the immediate coast of Mexico, pushing close to 30 degrees Celsius. Gulf of California still there as well. 
so maybe a little chance of another storm. In the Atlantic, the Caribbean, it's not looking great for us, 30 degrees possibly ahead of that potential tropical cyclone, and there's definitely that risk that even this late part of the season, we could see rapid intensification. Out of the open waters of the Atlantic, it's getting cooler, but still a fair amount of warm waters there. The Indian Ocean still looking decent north and south. Uh, obviously on the southern side it's starting to increase a little bit in terms of temperature coverage. Still pushing 29 or 30 degrees in the Bay of Bengal. One or two areas still at 30 degrees in the South China Sea, but Nalgi is moving over cooler waters now down to around 26 or 27. And the rest of the Philippine Sea looking decent. One or two little 30 degree areas there ahead of 27W. So in general, things still looking conducive for those sea surface temperatures. Look at the anomalies and they are generally above average in the areas that matter. La Nina effect is still very much there in the eastern Pacific in the equatorial zone, but in the tropics things still looking very much above average, particularly in the Caribbean and one or two parts of the Philippine Sea. Uh, so it's looking decent for these current cyclones. Oceanic heat content is at its maximum just south of Jamaica ahead of 15L so could be real concern that storm might uh, intensify quite a lot when it reaches that area but I think it might still be too weak and not fully organized by the time it reaches that hot spot. Eastern Pacific is cooling down quite a bit in the Western Pacific uh, a few areas there of decent oceanic heat content as well. So let's check the computer models first the short range up to five days and you can see both of these systems that 10% up there not likely to do anything now uh, but 15L there really developing in the Gulf of Honduras and then uh, making landfall in Belize there probably as the category one hurricane that's pretty much the National Hurricane Center's forecast right now as well they're expecting an 80 mile per hour peak um, at least as of this update but they might have issued a new update by the time this goes out um, but landfall and then moving over Central America and dying off uh, Nalgi there re-intensifying again to typhoon status might even get high-end category 1 before really weakening and shriveling up just off the coast of China Hong Kong and Macau uh, so we could still see some tropical storm force winds there but I doubt typhoon force conditions will be touching any area of land uh, and the storm will die off quite reasonably before reaching any of those land areas properly and in the southern Indian Ocean we're about to see the formation of this tr tropical cyclone as well most models are still on board one or two fluctuating just a little bit uh, but there is that cyclone forming there uh, well to the southwest of Indonesia and moving south there and then moving towards the west towards the end of that loop uh, so maybe that's the GFS signaling that it might not get as strong we'll find out in the longer range uh, but there it is first forming and only getting to weak tropical storm status in that five day period. Looking out to seven days, this is the rainfall estimates over the Western Pacific zone, still from Tropical Storm Nalgi, and from some of the resulting showers, even in northern Taiwan, actually getting a very high amount of rain in the northeastern part around Yilan, uh, possibly getting up to 20 inches of rain there. That's 500 millimeters possible in a little area there in northeastern Taiwan. Elsewhere, rainfall amounts will be pretty sedate, up to around two or three inches maximums in the next seven days across western and northern Luzon, Hong Kong, Macau and southern China. That's two to three inches, that's around uh, 50 to maybe 100 in, uh, millimeters at a push and one or two areas in Mindoro actually getting quite a bit more rainfall as well, uh, whether that's fully associated with the, with the tropical storm or whether it's just more monsoonal patterns, um, either way that's still quite a bit of rain for that area. Let's check the longer range. This is day 5 through 10. What else happens in the Atlantic zone? Nothing immediately, but eventually you start to see a new system developing. But where is it? Well, it could be something up there at the top right. Uh, but towards the end of this loop, there's actually a system developing there in the Sargasso Sea and headed towards the southeast United States right on day 10 there. Uh, before then, you can also note, well, there's another weaker system moving into northern Florida there as well. So that's rather 
rather interesting. In the Eastern Pacific though, a system forming there at the end of that 10 day period as well. Southern Hemisphere looking down into the South Indian Ocean, this system does get its act together again, moves southwestwards and then stalls a little bit, uh, gets rather strong, getting near to hurricane uh, equivalent status and actually does achieve it briefly just before the end of that 10 day period. So I guess that's a storm that we'll be tracking for a while and it will have plenty of chances to develop. If it struggles to develop at first, then those chances might come later on. Also around India, I think there might be a system that's getting up there as well. Anyway, that's the serious stuff done with. You can scan that barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as our uh, full season and individual storm animations uh, on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts, which are never going to be out of fashion, I don't think. In the Silly Range, there is a tropical storm briefly that hits northern Florida, a hurricane in the eastern Pacific, and another hurricane in the more eastern part of the North Atlantic. So late activity there, really bursting out, uh, and a hurricane that gets to a very high latitude there in mid-November, which would be a sight to see. Eastern Pacific there, looks like we might get a Category 1 or maybe Category 2 storm that stalls for a while. Ultimately, it doesn't really reach land as anything notable, uh, but it might be a big rainmaker. Of course, that is the very long range, and it's possible that none of that will happen. In the Indian Ocean, following that system again, and look at another tropical cyclone moving into India there, and a, quite a large one and quite strong briefly, getting near hurricane status and then making landfall. Um, I think that might be Andhra Pradesh possibly, uh, that it makes landfall in, in the middle part of November. That's still an extremely long way out, but that's something that we might be monitoring later on down the line. Of course, the main threats right now are the Western Pacific tropical storms and the potential TC in the Atlantic. At this point, I'd like to mention Hurricane Week. We announced it a few days ago. It will be taking place November 28th until December the 3rd with our annual uh, charity stream, Force for Good, on Sunday, December the 4th. On this day in 1993, we had a lone Category 4 typhoon headed towards the Philippines. It would make landfall on the 1st of November, but it peaked on this day as a moderate Category 4 with winds of 140 miles per hour. Uh, an impressive deep looking storm, obviously not uh, one of the really intense ones, the Category 5s of our world that tend to affect Luzon quite regularly, uh, but this nonetheless was still a very strong storm and was about to ram itself into the Philippine Islands, into central Luzon. Back into this year and the next name on the Atlantic naming list this uh, week is Lisa. It could be out of this next system. Eastern Pacific is Seymour and in the Central Pacific our next name is still Hone. Three and a half years. In the Western Pacific, the next name now is Banyan. Maybe it will get named 27W, who knows? And in the North Indian Ocean, our next name is Mandus. 82 storms have formed so far this year. That's just 10 off the average for a full year, so not far away. In the Australian region, next up is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean, Chiniso. And in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.